the dance at Gehenna. Breathing corpses lie on fallen idols and relics of an age prophesied. They ruled in a kingdom of heartache and sin, where virtues flee in a dizzying exodus of trust born from betrayal. The few good men, the few good women, pick at the bones in the carrion of the presaged betrayal. Wars and rumors of wars, cold ones, the ones against terror or against drugs, kept them scared, in check, and fearful. They ran naked and they knew it. If they could see it, they believed he could too. No one chased after them. Frightened, they dug out morals and values from a stack of rules delivered to a mountain written in stone. Hope lay beyond the good and evil, in the abyss where tenants cannot survive, and muted silver light darkens corners yet extinguishes the brightest sun. Husbands, wives, allies, and enemies castigate themselves, abandoning gray to enter the dark obscurity. Reveling in vain glory, yet ashamed of their bodies, they enjoyed humiliation and the pain of seven sins. They resigned eons to the lap of the gods, devouring their frenzied flesh, decaying from the seed surrendered and the promise of peace and fruitless progress, abscess from excess, stained their troubled living. The perseverance of some, facing a torturous nothing, found a messiah, not vanity's mirror, of high aspirations and praise. Wolves in sheep's clothing, consumed by thought, led the unfortunate toward false freedom, to sacrifice all to oblivion, trading renewal for a thousand deaths. Some toiled, challenged by memories and vast temptations by all things filthy and evil, yet delicious, beautiful and filling. Flesh, gold, and pleasures, their only possessions on the road that must be traveled to the land beyond the good and evil.